held my hand When I was young You made me smile With all your fun You told me right You told me the wrongs And that's why, Mother I sing you this song I remember Sunday You'd sing your song And us as children we sing along Your loving eyes Your smiling face No one Take my mother's place Dear mother I'll always love you And you're always in my heart And you're on my mind And I will cherish The love You are my mother And I am your son Good night, Mama In heaven you sleep Your guiding light Shines at my feet Your memory I'll always own But it's not the same when your mother is gone dear mother I'll always love you and you're always in my heart and you're on my mind and I will cherish You are my mother And I am your son Yes, you are my mother Thank God I'm your son Someone special Like they're sent from above To have and to hold Together growing old To love for the rest of our lives It's all part of my love, you are my woman, and I am your man. It's all part of God's plan, my love, joining our hearts till death to us part. God's plan I knew when 
life I felt like I'd known you Every day of my life Your blue eyes saw right to My wandering soul And guided me all the way home It was all part of God's plan My love, you are my woman And I am your man It's all part of God's plan My love, joining In life, Isabel Church, the Gospel of Christ, may Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, you blessed of my Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We're gathered here on this beautiful morning to pray for the happy repose of the soul and to thank God for the gift of the life of Isabel Curie. And we do so in the company of those she loved the most and those who loved her the most. We extend our condolences in a very special way to you, Seamus, and to all the children, Colette, Vincent, Seamus, Martin, Rosemary, and Francis. We also acknowledge the 12 grandchildren and 12 great-grandchildren, all part of that wonderful legacy that Isabel leaves behind in this world 
that part of her heart that meant the most to her, her family. We also acknowledge and extend our condolences to our sisters, Margaret, Gertie, Geraldine, Bernadette and her brother David. And of course, we remember the late Rosemary, Anna and Joseph. And all our loved ones who have died, family and friends, just last night we remembered Donald Carey at his month's mind. And we gather, as I say, to, to pray for her soul. It's a beautiful tradition in our Catholic faith to commend the souls of our deceased. It's our way of showing that we love them and we accompany them still on their journey to heaven. But also in a very special way to thank God for the gift of a life well lived. A life, you could say, well loved. And so we bring our grief. We bring the sense of loss, pain, that sense of absence, the hurt. We bring it to the only one who really can make any sense of it. The one who Isabel loved and worshipped and was faithful to all her life, to our God and this celebration. So I invite you now to join with me in prayer. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Isabel, whom you have called to journey to you. And since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. If there's plenty of room up here in the front, about three or four empty pews, if anyone needs a wee seat or would appreciate one, you're very welcome to, jo- to come up, up towards the front here on this side. I'm going to invite now uh, Seamus and Nicole, who are going to read our first and second reading for us. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. But the Lord has said so. That day it will be said. See, this is our God in whom we hope for salvation. The Lord is one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Are you, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death. So that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him we know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish ones did take their lamps but they brought no oil, whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late, and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a cry. The bridegroom is here. Go out and meet him. At this, all those bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. But they replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They had gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall, and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids arrived later, Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. So stay awake, because you do not know either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'd like to begin by simply reading a few words that Isabel's family have put together for this celebration. Isabel was born on the 14th of August 1936 in Green Hills, the Lislaban Road, Clough Mills, the firstborn of nine children to her parents, David and Mary Martin. As the eldest in the family, her mother relied upon her help for the many chores involved in rearing a large family, and this is where she picked up the life habit of a spotless and well-ordered home. Isabella was a very beautiful woman. You can see that here in the photograph, just in front of the altar. And she had many suitors. But the best man won through, Seamus. And they were married on the 10th of July, 1956, right here, in the Sacred Heart Church. If, if you're a mathematician, you know that's 
now just over 66 years of happily married life. Well, as James put it, you, 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 you get 50% of another person and you lose 50% of yourself when you marry. Some days it'll be 30%, some days it'll be 70%. It's a bit of give and take, but it works out in the end, and it certainly did with Seamus and Isabel. The best man was her late brother Joseph. Her bridesmaid was Seamus' sister Annie, and her youngest sister Bernadette, cute as a button, and her pink dress and her beautiful curls was Flower Girl. Just a few years after their marriage, Isabel's family, the Martin family, were greatly affected as they witnessed the suffering and decline of their wee sister Rosemary due to leukemia, which was at that time a fatal disease. There was no treatment or cure for Rosemary. The suffering and loss of this child of six years of age, as you can understand, impacted their lives, the lives of this close family in so many ways for the rest of their lives. Seamus and Isabel as the eldest are remembered for the great support they gave to her parents and to all the family throughout this time. At some point, the family returned to some form of normality. And the sisters remember Isabel as being great fun and very much a role model, as her house was spotless and her husband and children were well loved and cared for. Her own children have many memories, including the walks from Clough Mills to Lislaban and back often accompanied by their neighbour and lifelong friend, Paddy Frew. In time for dinner, to be made for their dad on his return from work. Memories of being bundled into the back of her mini-traveller and away to Carnloch, where her sister Gertie lived, or often to Ballycastle in the evenings to the fairground attractions, and usually accompanied by sisters Geraldine and Bernadette and brother David. Their home was filled with music, She always sang about the house while doing her housework and a great selection of the latest records were brought and played on the latest model of record player. And in her later years, she had a great affection for Daniel O'Donnell and his music. You'll be relieved to know there'll be no Daniel O'Donnell at Mass today. (laughs) She gave them brilliant and special Christmases. The gifts she bought Delicious Christmas lunches that haven't been matched to date. Jim Reeves and Charlie Pride carols playing on the record player. And this love of Christmas is carried through into the next generations. The lives of their children and grandchildren. But what Isabel's family are most grateful for is that she instilled into their everyday lives good manners. Prayer. And to always help those in need, regardless of their background. Her grandchildren have many happy memories of walking up from sleepovers to the smell of a big breakfast cooking, having super noodles for dinner, her special egg and scallion sandwiches, the best in the world, that she seemed to spend most of her time at the kitchen sink, and that she fed any stray cat that came about. In 2010, Isabel was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and her capacity diminished gradually until she needed specialised medical care and so went to live in a care home. And she passed away peacefully, quietly, albeit unexpectedly. Late evening of Tuesday the 16th of August 2022, just two days after her 86th birthday. She was born the day before the Assumption And she died the day after the Assumption of Our Lady, which I think is very significant. She died in St. James Lodge Care Home in Balamani. The family would like at this stage to thank all the staff at St. James Lodge Care Home for the excellent and compassionate care that they gave to Isabel. Father uh, Liam Blaney, who sadly is unable to be with us today, but would have liked to be, uh, was very good to her as well and visited often and, uh, and I'm sure I'd just like to take this occasion to thank him for all that he did uh, for Isabel over the years. She is sadly missed today by her husband, Seamus, her children, Colette, Vincent, Seamus, Martin, Rosemary and Francis, her 12 grandchildren and her 12 great-grandchildren. Her sisters, as I mentioned at the start, Margaret and Gertie, Geraldine, Bernadette and her brother, David, 
And as I said as well, we also remember today, we Rosemary, Anna and Joseph. Now, as a gospel, you notice I chose this of the ten bridesmaids. It can be a strange kind of gospel. You know, ten bridesmaids, it's a bit much, right? And then this idea that five are left out and five get to go in. But I believe it's a very appropriate gospel. The Lord told this parable, this story, to help us understand that life, even when it gets a bit long, has a meaning. And that, in a certain way, our life is a preparation for that moment when we will hear the call, wake up, he's here. And so the Lord encourages us to be sensible, not foolish. And being sensible means to make sure that we're ready for that moment and that we have plenty of oil in our lamp. And in the Christian tradition, we understand that that oil comes from all that we do for love. Love of others and love of God. We read there an account of Isabel's life, a brief account. And there were many threads, but what brings them all together and weaves them all as one is that love that she carried in her heart for her family, her neighbours, her friends, and for her God. That's love in her heart. Every, every sandwich she made, she made it with love. Every lunch she cooked, every stray cat she fed, right? There's not a single drop of love that doesn't go into that lamp, into that deposit, preparing us for the day when Jesus comes and to see if we're ready. And yes, at the end of her life, just like these bridesmaids, Isabel grew drowsy. In a sense, you could say she fell asleep for the best part of a decade. But she had her lamp at that stage well filled with oil. And you can be assured when that moment came on Tuesday the 16th of August and she breathed her last that her eyes opened to the light and Jesus was there, arms open, saying, well done, good and faithful servant. And I know, Seamus, that while she was, when she became unable to pray, you prayed for her. And I can't remember exactly, but was it 2,000 rosaries? Something like that. Eh? Well over 2,000 rosaries. Prayed every night a rosary for his wife. What a legacy of love. What a way to live your vows, even when you can't be physically together. What a way to show your love for your wife and to be there for her spiritually. And I'm sure she's very, very grateful. Uh, and, and all of us are for that love that you showed faithfully all these years. And when you were stood in this church 66 years ago, you looked at each other and said, till death us do part. And today you can hold your head high and have gratitude in your heart that you fulfilled your vows faithfully, as did she, to the very last. On that note, I'm going to invite now those members of the family who will be praying the prayers of the faithful, if you can come forward now to do so, and if we'll all stand now to join in prayer for the prayers of the faithful. Heavenly Father, with faith and trust, we present our petitions in Jesus' name. For Isabella, who is in baptism, was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Isabel's friends, whose lives she enriched so deeply, and who are gathered here today in remembrance of her life. Lord, hear us. For all our deceased relatives and friends, 
and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That all of us here grieving the loss of Isabel may be consoled and strengthened at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing our prayers, those spoken aloud and those that remain in the silence of our hearts. As we celebrate this Eucharist together, may we be consoled by the gift of your Holy Spirit and filled with hope that one day we shall joyfully greet Isabel again when every tear will be wiped away and sadness and sorrow are but distant memories. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I you now to sit, be seated and if those uh, who are going to bring up the gifts can go to the back of the church now where they will find them. I invite you to stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Isabel, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Saviour may find in him a merciful judge. Who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and every word to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
and sending down your Spirit upon them like the fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death, and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Noel, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Isabel, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we stand and dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. invite you to kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let perpetual light shine upon her with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Now for our Holy Communion procession, uh, obviously most of you will be familiar, the church is up the middle and down the sides. Um, for anyone who might be gluten intolerant we have gluten free or low gluten hosts available just let myself or Eileen know and we'll retrieve one of these hosts for you and for anyone who for whatever reason won't be receiving the blessed sacrament you're very welcome to come forward to myself for a blessing if you so desire you can indicate your preference for a blessing by simply folding your arms like that across your chest
Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Isabel may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us ways. praise the Lord. Let us take Thanks leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. So we pause now for silent prayer and as we do, I will sprinkle Isabel's coffin with holy water, a reminder of the baptism, a baptism I presume she received in this very church, and uh, which is her passport to heaven. And then I will incense her coffin uh, with the blessed incense as a sign of our prayers lifting up to heaven on her behalf, but also of the good fragrance of the memories that she's left behind that will, for many years to come, bring comfort and consolation to your family. And of course, the dignity of her mortal remains, which have been a temple of God. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Isabel in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with them on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Isabel in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant. And help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister forever. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest.
How long will I love you? As long as stars are above you, and longer if I can. How long will I need you? As long as the seasons need to follow their plan. As long as the sea is bound to wash upon the sand, how long will I want you? As long as you want me to, and longer by far. How long will I hold you? As long as your father told you. As long as you are. How long will I give to you? As long as I live to you. However long you say. How long will I love you? As long as stars are above you, and longer if I may. And longer if I may. How long will I love you? As long as stars are above you, and longer if I can.